Mr. Chairman, always a pleasure to see both of you, and I, I thank you both for your support of, uh, of seaports around the state. I, I just want to be real, real quick on this. I know there's a lot of concern, a lot of conversations on these issues. And most of our, a lot of our seaports have old charters. Uh, those charters do not operate without preemption from the state or federal government. Uh, just because there's some language that was put in there prior to World War II doesn't mean that that gives them the authority to do something that's been outlawed by the state of Florida or the federal government. Uh, there's some language in this that's obviously very old uh, that you simply couldn't do. Uh, there are clearly, I mean, for instance, growth management chapters that you all have modified in the Florida legislature. They're bound by the growth management, certainly language that's in here that, that would authorize to do something that may or may not be covered uh, back in 1941 under growth management laws, but you've changed in the 90s and the 2000s. They couldn't do that. They certainly have to comply with those. In fact, I, I think they're complying with an old DRI. Uh, so there's there's plenty of language out there that this board has to comply with. I know there's some fear over some of the language that's in there and what it means and what it can do for it, uh, but it can't operate without the state of Florida overlooking it, without the federal government overlooking it, and frankly without the state of Florida and the federal government overlooking any tenant that happens to operate on a seaport. They're all required to comply with, with a myriad of federal regulations and a myriad of state regulations that wouldn't apply to a landlord. All of our ports are landlords. Uh, they don't operate a lot of these facilities that are on them. They're operated by those individual tenants who in turn comply with state regulations and federal regulations. So I think you need to be careful on, on looking at that. I know there's some desire to make some changes to it. Uh, eminent domain has been brought up. I think every transportation entity has an eminent domain authority. Uh, I can't think of too many times it's been complied with that has been used because simply it's too difficult to do and uh, it raises a lot of concern and it costs a lot of money and it's easier to buy the land from a willing uh, individual than it is to try to take that land from somebody. Uh, courts have come through a whole bunch of things on there. We're happy to help in any way possible. Uh, I'm sorry to see the discussion has, has, has come to where it's at because this is a great community. Uh, in my opinion, the sport's been operating very well for a number of years uh, and I think we're hopeful that this area can, can embrace what it's doing to it. I, I would hope that the communication needs to be a lot better because you need to have a willing community that supports the board as well. And, and absent that, I think there's been some discussions of it. It's not just changes to the charter. I think businesses want to go where they know that they're welcome to be there. And uh, the language that's gone on is just unfortunate on both sides. And I, I would hope that both sides would find a way to work together. I know that you two are trying to do that. I wish you best of luck on it because I know it can be difficult. And uh, I, I'm happy and I think we stand ready to help either of you anyway and, and certainly this community any way we can. Uh, we think the ports are a vital thing on it. We're also concerned we want to make sure that they're environmentally conscious and safety conscious. Thank you. Mike, stay right there for a moment. If uh, you work with all of the ports in Florida, correct? Like 15, is that? There are 15. Some operate, <laughs> some are in they're all They're all different. Have you seen, and I know you assist them in a variety of different things, have you seen other communities go through what we're going through right now and redoing port charters? Have you seen that? Can you give us an example of, uh, of, uh, of hope for a community that wants to change its charter or, or how do they go about it? And I'm putting you on the spot. We haven't talked, so I'm glad that you're here. Does anything come to mind? Uh, well, <laughs> and all due respect to the matrices put together, it's, it's not exactly that correct. I mean, there's, there's a number of, Chapter 315, for instance, provides a lot of authority to... Uh, to, to Bruce. I, I, with respect to this type of entity that's a, a, a not part of the city and not part of the county, because we have, as you know, two couple large ones, uh, Everglades and, and Miami are county entities, so they, they work with the county. But Canaveral's pretty close. Canaveral actually has a, a wonderful, uh, they operate a, a Jenny Park Beach front, they operate a hotel, they operate restaurants, uh, they certainly have got uh, uh, a number of the kind of build their cargo business, uh, and you may or may not have read you're having an issue right now with where to put uh, railroad crossing. So it, this is not, I mean, these kind of issues get out there, and certainly people really get concerned when you're putting a railroad crossing close to their million dollar home that's on uh, Maryland Beach. So there are issues that, that need to be resolved, and it takes a lot of communication, a lot of work. Um, I think at some point, uh, I know there was a lot of issues with respect to a port master plan that was put out there that frankly could have undergone a little more review with the board was put out there with oil refinery. I don't think there's ever desire to put oil refinery in there. I, I bet you if you ask those port authority board members, they, they probably regret that language being in there. But So that, that leads to a discussion on that. And I, I think 
<coughs> I think coming up with a rational plan and, and, and understanding that there, there's a tenant that's been operating here for quite some time, has been doing a pretty good job at uh, making them happy. Uh, uh, it, it just takes a lot, of, a lot of work, and I don't know if you're ever going to make everybody happy, but I, I would just uh, say that putting down the base requirements that you have for them, having a fourth master plan that's realistic, that everybody can agree to is probably pretty much more, probably more important than resolving the charter issue because frankly, if you look at the charter issues and the changes that have been made in the past that really have related to membership on that charter, um, taxing authority of that charter, and <coughs> other minor abilities of that charter, uh, a lot of state laws are out there that are already regulating how they can work. Like I said, Chapter 315 already delineates a whole host of things that a court employee can do. So you can make some minor changes to that. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, you're going to have to have community agreement and industry agreement on what exactly that port's master plan is on moving forward. That's probably more important than and ultimately the charter. I, I would say that the charter, uh, I know there's some concern about putting language in there to inhibit what a port's going to do, but I would, I would caution you to not inhibit too much. Uh, now there's some obvious safety and other concerns on there, but uh, you need to give them the authority to operate uh, within state and federal regulations and laws. Can you give me an example of